Hi, this is Paul Casey, the Kempo Karate Hall of Fame Zoom meeting. Today, we're going to be talking about master keys and unraveling the mystery as well as exploring Ed Parker's thoughts on this. Is it martial science or is it Kempo Voodoo? We'll let you decide. Thank you. On uh, Mr. Parker, and it was basically um, he this concept or this discussion on Master Key came from Professor Chow. Is there any validity to that? There is. I would. It was what I was just about to mention is that there was a phrase that he used. He says he got the Master Keys from Professor Chow. Now, what he called Master Keys, I wasn't smart enough back then to say, well, what were they? Um, but uh, you know, with what uh, Dennis had just said, I don't see where there's a disagreement. I mean, I, what I see is that his definition, meaning Mr. Parker's, that he published about it's a move or a series of moves. This applies to the single moves that Dennis was just talking about. It, talk, it talks about the techniques that Marty referred to. Okay, and uh, it also refers to that philosophy or concept if you want to take concepts and group them as master key concepts or principles yep. so it's a it's a versatile uh term but it's one i think that kind of gets to be a catch-all at times like uh, todd was saying i i have a question oh, for that then let's let's look at it this way can we use a different term for the word master key then so it will demystify oh. it because it seems to be confusing there a little bit for some people. What about that, Marty? What are your thoughts? Uh, you know, I, I I believe in what Mr. Wedlick was just talking, and, and Mr. Knetzer. You know, as, as far as my thoughts of a master key, and, and like I've been taught, anything can be called or classified as master key, uh, uh, methods of execution, slice, whip, thrust, roundhouse hook, hammering, that could be master keys that we, we apply, you know, ingredients of a technique, you add, you alter, delete, suffix, prefix, insert, rearrange, motion, how to study motion, you know, you go into directions, your methods, your paths, your dimensions, you know, the angle. For, you were asking what we consider other than calling it a master key, because like Mr. Weatherly was saying, it could be a generic overuse term, and, and I think Mr. Ketcher was saying the same, you know, we could go into methods of execution, which are, are all part of the system, and that could be called the master keys. And that can consist of slices, whips, thrusts, roundhouse, hooks, hammering type motions. You know, then you can go into an ingredients of a technique, you know, add, alter, delete, suffix, prefix, insert, rearrange, or motions, the direction, the method, the path, the dimension, the angles, the same thing that Mr. Gergen was talking earlier about. So I, I, I believe what they're stating too, you know, I, I believe it's an overused term. I, I personally prefer to go with more of the, the specific type analogies that with that, and then the techniques, you know, we, we can get into that as, as far as that goes too. I'm going to read that, you know, I'm going to go to the encyclopedia because it has, uh, it has the term the definition in here and you guys can correct me on that Lee. What was the original, maybe what was added onto it, how it was changed. We did discuss this before. There's a key difference because of a word or two. So I'm going to go slow on this. And it says master key basic. So it says a single move that can be used in more than one predicament with equal effect. That's the first definition. Then it goes master key movements, a move or series of moves that can be used in more than one predicament. For example, and then it gives a rear heel kick, shin scrape, 
An in-step stomp can be used for a full Nelson, rear bug, bear hug, and with the arms free or pin, rear arm lock, etc. Similarly, an arm break can be applied to a cross wrist grab, a lapel grab, or a hair grab. Application of the arm break would remain constant, but the methods of controlling the wrist would vary. Then the last defi- our definition we have in here that's cued, master key techniques. And I think that probably answers more than the other one, but maybe I'm wrong. And that's where you guys are going to come in and answer that for me. The sequence of movements that can be applied to a number of predicaments and then sa- says C reference family related moves. Todd, help me. Help me understand that. So, yeah. So what, what <laughs> Master Key, ba- oh, sorry. so the methods of execution, Mr. Uh, Zananovich was talking about. Methods of execution are ultimately, you got seven ba- basic methods of execution. Those are the Master Key methods of execution, right? Am I, am I correct, gentlemen? Because off of those, a hook, a slice of roundhouse, a thrust punch, a, all of those seven methods are, exist all others that are either modified or uh, combined, right? So in my mind, that's what a master key is. It's something that has that, uh, that weight in the world and uh, that consistency. Like I had mentioned before with the three, the three master key planes, and I do refer to them on my poster as master key planes because they are what everything else is built of. And they are ultimately what the, the universal pattern culminated from those master key, key planes from the medical field with regard to the transverse coronal and sagittal planes. And they exist, have existed for hundreds of years, like lots of people like to say. All the, you know, uh, anyway, back to the tech, master key techniques. So I would bet you, you'd be hard pressed to find very many Kempoists that would be able to take very many techniques and put them in a different situation other than some of these gentlemen here and a few others that I know of and make them effective or use them effectively in a master key situation. I do not use that terminology that much. I prefer to use terms uh, such as relative positioning, position recognition, and move into more of an equation formula idea. I don't even use the equation formula as much as a terminology, but for to, to, but to put the, the label of master key on so many things in my mind is, um, you know, at, at times just super redundant and, and out of touch. I'm going to go uh, to... Uh... I want to let you jump in. I want to just reference what you were talking about. This is uh, Todd's uh, diagram, as you can see. And those terms that you're using, Todd, are medical, correct? Yes, transverse, coronal, and sagittal. So just it, the thing that saddens me in book four, when Mr. Parker had uh, had the uh, the graphic done, and I don't know if it was if it was uh, Ed, Edmund doing that. I'm trying not to call him Junior because he doesn't like that. If it was Edmund that did it or if it was uh, Mr. Parker that did it. But when they did the alignment of the universal pattern on the, in the graphic, they put this blank kind of uh, the, the blank universal pattern. And then they went with the, with the guy for one, two, and then dropped down to three. So it took it all out of alignment. And it doesn't, at least in my mind. And when you look at the, the way, so what I did was I looked at it and I aligned it. So you have one, two, and three and then it drops down. And then if you bring in that whole medical uh, depiction of the transverse coronal and sagittal, then it all really kind of starts to make sense. And you look at it and go, yeah, height, depth, and width. That's what we are. We're three-dimensional. And one, two, and three, those are the master keys of height, depth, and width. And everything else is a diagonal dissection or, or uh, some modification of those three planes. I'm going to go to Marty real quick. Marty, can you give us an example of techniques that are master keys that probably one of the easiest the, you know the you know the principles that you said of opposite and reverse and sure i sure. mean because that I may think, help a little bit here i think one of the easiest techniques that everybody can grasp onto is you do leaping crane and you're going to the outside of a right then you go on the inside and you do the same technique i mean you, you can put it into snapping twig the first motion or you just follow through 
the same way, but it'll give you little to no change doing it on the opposite side. That's an example, one example. And that's probably the one that we show that, that really will spell it out really easy when you start looking at the, the master key techniques as we coin it. Okay. Uh, so, your thoughts uh, on that, Lee? Uh, you know, I, Skip Hancock had a really good um, way to explain it. And he, the way he did was, uh, and Dennis, you remember him saying this, he would ask somebody if you were locked in a room and uh, it was on fire, would you rather have a ring of keys like a maintenance man would have to unlock that door or would you rather have a master key? And of course, people said, I want just the one key that'll open any lock. I don't want to have to go through a whole ring. And this ties into an argument that people have. They say, well, Kempo's got too many techniques. There's a thing called Hicks Law that says it slows down your decision-making process. You have too much to pick from. And when you look at the way that Mr. Parker put the system together, there are so many examples that I've found over the years where he's just using more than one way to get an idea across. And this is where you start to see the bleed over from master keys to family groupings. And even the family grouping definition changed over time as well. Went from family groupings, related techniques, associated moves, and then it turned into family uh, related techniques and associated moves. So he boiled it down to two. There was a lot of conversation between himself and uh, Skip and uh, some of the others there that contributed to all of this. But I think with what you're saying is like what um, Mr. Z is here is saying is like, if you do delayed sword, you do it for a grab, you do it for a punch, you can do it for a push, you can do it for even a high kick. Um, Joe. That's a master key. Scraping hoof, you can do it for a number of things. And then that's a technique. That's a series. If you do a move like an arm break, like he says, that break out a crossing talon, do it on the vertical, do it on a horizontal, do it from a, a twist stance. I could do it at the end of gripping talon or flight to freedom. Okay, all that works together. So you get the idea. It's like you got a move that works many different ways like that key will open many locks. That's the simplest way, I think, to get it across. And then you can apply it all these other ways with these principles and, and uh, concepts you guys are talking about. Well, I know one thing with your experience in law enforcement, we both know that those fine motor skills are out the door. You right. know, yeah, because you have an emotional issue that's involved and how to control that. And that's where your training comes in and you utilize that. So are we looking for the most simplest response presented to us that we might be able to use uh yes and this is why systems uh some systems say well we've got very few and a lot of this stuff this looks like it's grab knee and elbow um but training accounts for a lot yes. so when you get into the parker techniques and you're looking at this is where the family grouping concept is so important because you got a right or more block on the inside of a right, you got a left or more block on the outside of the right, you're finding yourself in that position, you should just be able to react. Mm -hmm. Because you can run through the scenarios and be, being a, a pilot like I was, you know, they put us in simulators, they make bad things happen. So that if the bad thing happens for real, you can respond very quickly with memory items and then you can go to your written checklist. Of course, we don't have a written checklist on the street but you do have your memory items, but you're used to this sort of thing. That's the point of the Kempo techniques is to put you in there and you go, bam, and you do it.